Good morning, everyone. This is yet another installment of our Solving Equations notes. We are going to be titling this installment Solving Equations with either no solution and all real numbers. Now, not all of our solving equations will have no solution or all real numbers. Some of them will have solutions, but we just want to basically point out that there are some equations that will have no solution and some that if you substitute in any number for your variable um, that your your equation will stay true. So let's get going. We're going to start off with an example that we have seen before. Variables on both sides, in this case our variable is b, that's not a 6. Um, well that first one is a 6 but this is a b and this is also a b. So 6 minus b equals 5b plus 30. So as we know we want to start off with the smaller variable over here. We have a negative b versus on this side of the equal sign we have a positive 5. We want to make sure we're not just combining these, right? There's like a wall right here. You can't just say oh negative b plus 5 is 4. Um, you can't do that. So you want to add b to both sides of the equation and what do you get over here you get 6 over here 6 equals 5b plus b you get 6b plus 30 now we need to get this all alone right the, isolate this variable oh why did I put p I meant v, b okay I minus 30 from both sides this cancels 6 minus 30 is going to give me a negative 24 equals 6b, not p. Now I divide both sides by 6 because again I'm trying to get that b all by itself. 24 divided by 6, or excuse me, a negative 24 divided by 6 is going to give me a negative 4 equals b because this is 1 of course. And that is solving an equation with one solution. So again, we just solved this equation, b equals negative 4, and that is one solution, one and only one solution for this equation. What that means is if you substitute negative 4 in for b, then both of these should be equal. Well, let's try it. Here's our original equation, and we know that b equals negative 4. It's right there. So I'm going to substitute negative 4 in for b. And we've done this before. And what do I get out? Over here, this becomes a rainbow. This is 10 equals 5 times negative 4 is negative 20 plus 30 also equals 10. So that means if we could if we used any other number besides negative 4, this wouldn't be true. It wouldn't turn out to be 10 equals 10. If you don't believe me, let's try it. Let's 5. 6 minus 5 equals 5 times 5 plus 30. 6 minus 5 is 1. This side is 25. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 30. That's going to give me 55. 1 doesn't equal 55, right? Only if you put in negative 4 for b would both of the um, sides of e either of these equations become true. So we're just going to really look at that today. So my second example. Let's start working this out. First, of course, we use distributive property. So we distribute the 3 to the x and the 3 to the 1 and we get 3x plus 3 minus 5 equals 3x minus 2. Now we combine like terms on both sides. So on this side we have a positive 3 and a negative 5. So we get 3x minus 2 equals 3x, oh my goodness, minus 2. These are equal to each other. Now if we kept going, let's say we minus 3x from both sides because we always like to work with our variables first. This cancels. This also cancels. So we get negative 2 equals negative 2. Well, there's nothing more we can really do here. So when this happens, when both sides of our equation equal each other, our solution we put in as an R like that with a little double sign, but it's also just all real numbers. 
Now, what this means is there's not only one solution. Negative 2 is not the only solution. But we could put any number, any real number in for x, and both sides of this equation would equal each other. Meaning, this side of the equation right here would equal this side of the equation, as long as we put in the same number. So, let's try it. Here's our original equation. And let's say we want to put in the number 5. So we do 3, we want to substitute 5 in for x. 3 times 5 plus 1 minus 5 equals 3 times 5 minus 2. All right, 3 times 5 plus 1, that's 6. Minus 5 equals 3 times 5 is 15 minus 2. 3 times 6 is 18 minus 5. On this side, we have 13. Does 18 minus 5 equal 13? Well, of course it does. So look, 5 works. You could even try 0. Let's try 0. Let's put 0. 0 in for our original. So we do 3 times 0 plus 1 minus 5 equals 3 times 0 minus 2. Let's do this side, whole to this side first. So 0 plus 1 is 1 times 3 minus 5 equals 3 times 0 is 0 minus 2. 3 times 1 minus 5 is minus 2 and look negative 2 equals negative 2. So notice any number you could try anything. You could try negative 17, you could try positive 35. Any number you put in, that's a real number, right? Real number. Any number you put in for x will give you a balanced equation. Alright, let's go for our next example. Example number three, 5y minus 2y equals 3y plus 2. So remember, we combine like terms on both sides first, in this, and we have a positive 5y and a negative 2y. So we get 3y equals 3y plus 2. Well, now we would want to get all of our variables to one side, right? So we subtract 3y. We subtract 3y. Over here, we get 0. 0 equals, this is also 0, positive 2. Well, does 0 equal 2? Heck no, it doesn't. 0 does not equal 2. So this equation has no solution. No solution. 0 doesn't equal 2, period. Anything that you put in for y for either one of these is not going to give you a balanced equation. There's absolutely no solution for this equation. So for the no solution, you'll come down and you'll get two numbers that equal each other down at the bottom. Like for this case, 0 equals 2. You might also get something like, if it were a different problem, you might also get something like negative 12 equals positive 12. Well, those don't equal each other. Even though they're opposites, negative 12 does not equal positive 12. So if you got something like this, you also have no solution. You might also get something like 7 equals 9 also no solution because 7 does not equal 9. So if on tonight's worksheet you get anything at the bottom when you're all done with your solving equation steps anything that don't equal each other there's no solution. Alright now of course it's time for the you try so go ahead and give it a shot. Sorry guys C should read 11 plus 3x minus 7 equals 6x plus 5 minus 3x. Before there was an x attached to this 11, but don't use that x. So again, pause, try the u try, play for the answers, see if you get them correct. All right, here are the answers for the u try. First one is x equals 0. I'm just going to move through them quickly. You can pause if you need to see your steps. b is 5 equals 5, or all real numbers. C, there's no solution. So at the bottom, you should have gotten 4 equals 5, and of course, 4 does not equal 5, so there's no solution. Next thing that we're going to do is have you come up with your own. We're going to give you the answer down here. It's 5 equals 5, so of course, this is an identity. Identity. And you are going to come up with the equation. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Of course, we always want to keep our equation, equation balanced, so whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Well, first thing for this one is I want to add 4x to both sides. So I'm going to add 4x on this side. So this side becomes 4x plus 5. 
And this side becomes 5 plus 4x. Well, that's the same thing, right? 4x plus 5, 5 plus 4x, same thing. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to add 2 to both sides, just the number 2. So this side now becomes 2 plus 4x plus 5. And this side now becomes 5 plus 4x plus 2. The only thing I'm adding to both sides, maybe I should make it a different color, is this 2 right here. So 2 and 2. Now, what if I wanted to split this up, what, or combine them even? This side I'm going to make 7 plus 4x, just by combining the 5 and the 2. This side I'm going to make um, 5 plus, mm, not 5 plus 4x. This side I'm going to make 5 plus, and I'm going to split this 4x into 2x plus 2x. And then I'm going to say plus 2. Well, now I have an equation up, up here in purple. This is something you might see on one of your worksheets. So let's take this equation and move it. I'm going to pause for a sec. So I've now moved the equation, and now I want to solve it. So over here, I have, I want to combine like terms on this side first, because we know we combine like terms first. So I'm going to combine the 2x and the 2x and the 5 and the 2, and I get 7 plus 4x. And over here, I already have 7 plus 4x. So I know eventually I'm going to get another identity, right? Oh, I forgot my x. So I minus 4x from both sides, minus 4x from both sides, and I get 7 equals 7, which is another identity. It's not 5 equals 5, but it is another identity. So I just have worked backwards. Remember, any number that goes into this original equation should keep the equation balanced. All right, so now let's try this one. This one only has one solution. It's x equals 7. So to this side, I want to add 3x. So if I add 3x to that side, I have to add 3x to this side. Um, and then I want to add 2 to both sides. So I'm going to add 2 plus 3x plus x. And to this side, I add 2 as well. So this becomes 7 plus 3x plus 2. And now if I wanted to go back and solve this, I'll pause again and I'll move it. So I've moved the work down here and I have now what's my original equation up here. Well, first thing we would do for this is we would combine like terms on each side. So on this side we have the 7 and the positive 2 and on this side we have the x and the 3x. So over here we get 2 plus 4x equals 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 3x. Well, if we wanted to solve it, we would subtract 3x from both sides and we would get 2 plus x equals 9, because this cancels, minus 2 from both sides. And look at that, we get x equals 7. So as long as you add the same things to both sides, or you can even subtract the same things from both sides, that's fine too. You should keep your equation balanced, and this time we're giving you the answer, and you're coming up with this original, original equation. So you'll find these problems on the back of your worksheet.